Hello. In this video, we will learn how to use while and do while statements in Java. Many times in our program, we have to repeat the same steps multiple times. Let's say, print the results of all the students. Calculate salary for all employees. For such kinds of statements, we use loops. There are two kinds of loops. One is entry control loop and the other is exit control loop. In entry control loop, the check as to when the loop stops executing is done in the beginning. In exit control loop, the check to end the loop is done after each iteration. So exit control loop is executed at least once. Example, entry control loop is while and exit control loop is do while. Let's start by learning how to write a while statement. While statement is a looping construct that executes a block of code while a condition is true. It has four parts. First is initialization, which is actually outside the loop. Before you enter the while loop, you need to ensure that you have a count variable or a condition variable initialized so you can enter the loop in the first place. Then is the loop condition, which must be a Boolean expression. If it is true, then only do you enter the loop. Next is your block of code which needs to be looped. You can either have a single statement or a block within the while loop. The third very important component is the counter change statement which needs to be within your while block. The counter is linked to your loop condition and ensures that it changes so that at some point in time when your work is done the condition evaluates to false and you come out of the loop. Otherwise, you will be stuck in the loop forever. Let's take a look at this with an example. Suppose we have to print star five times while using the while loop. Before we enter the loop, we will initialize our counter to one. We know our loop condition is that counter is less than or equal to five. Within the loop, we will write our print statement to print the star and then we will increment the counter so that after five iterations, it exits out of the loop. Now, this while loop will print a star five times. If you need to print a star 10 times, you just need to change your while condition to 10. Instead of star, if you want to print the number series 1 to 5, you can print the counter and it will print the number from 1 to 5. The same loop can also work to print a simple series say 2, 4, 6, 5 times. Then you will just print counter into 2. Any other series program can also be built in the same way. Let's look at another example of a program where you have to print each digit of the number separately. Let us understand the logic of how to break a number down into individual digits. As the same concept is used in multiple programs, what we will do is separate each digit from the right and then print it till the number becomes zero. So let's set up our loop. In initialization, we will set our number to some value which can also be taken in by the user. In the while loop, we put the condition to execute the loop till the number becomes equal to zero. Now, within the while loop, the way to get an individual digit is to get the remainder after dividing by 10. This will give you the rightmost digit. You will now print this number. Next, you need to remove this digit from your number. For this, we will just do integer division by 10. Since the number is an integer, the decimal number will automatically get truncated. Now these three steps will continue in the loop till the number becomes zero and we get a print of all individual numbers. There can be many variations of this program, like find the sum of all the digits instead of printing. Then you will add the numbers in another variable sum and print it out of the loop. There are more programs like palindrome, reverse the number, etc. which use the same basic logic. Now, let's look at the do while loop. In a do while loop, the test condition comes after your loop, so the loop is executed at least once. Do know the syntax as this loop has a semicolon at the end. If you want to compare the while with the do while, 
it restructures like this. Let us see this with an example. Suppose you are asked to take some option from the user, like write a program to calculate area and perimeter of a circle in a loop. If the user enters 1, calculate the area, 2, calculate the perimeter of the circle and 0 if the person wants to quit. Again, I would like you to remember that you will use this loop in most of the menu driven programs where the user will continually want to do something until he or she wants to exit. We will first write our loop in which do while condition is option not equal to zero. Now within the loop we will first print the menu for the user and take the input. We will take option and radius. The option will change every time and will give the exit condition. We will now use a nested switch statement and for option 1 and 2 we will calculate and print the area and perimeter respectively. If the user enters 0, then the loop will automatically stop. In this, we have used nested switch statements inside the while. You can also use nested if statement if you have a range of values to compare or just a couple values like let's say check if number is even or odd. Now you could have a situation where in a while loop you never reach the terminating condition due to some logical error. In that case, the while loop keeps on executing. Such a loop is called an infinite loop. For example, in this loop, we have not written any increment statement or we unintentionally overwrote the increment value. Do go through some sample programs on while or do while loops before you move on to the next topic of for loops.